What would Michael do? All right, the walking on water. The next important miracle in the Synoptic Gospels is the equally unforgettable account of Jesus walking on the water. Once again, the episode is recorded in three Gospels. But this time, one of them is the Gospel of John. Given that scholars widely recognize that Jesus is depicted as divine in John's Gospel, we will focus our attention once again on the synoptic evidence since that is what is in question. Consider the account in Mark. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up into the hills to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were distressed in rowing, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when, he, when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. <laughs> but immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, I am, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. While there are several differences in detail, again, contradictions prove God didn't write the Bible. So, just takes one. Um, in unique features in the three accounts, it is the substantial agreement among them that demands our attention. Oh my God, you're literally spelling out that you're not even trying to determine if this is real or not. You want it to be real, so you're just picking the bits and pieces that go together and stringing them along. Okay, in all three accounts, Jesus does and says two very remarkable things. First, he walks on the Sea of Galilee in the midst of the wind and the waves. Second, in all three accounts, when the disciples see him and become afraid, he says to them, I am, do not be afraid. Again, we don't know what Jesus said. You've told us that a bunch of times. This is not a strict transcript of Jesus' words. So why make a big deal about it when you already, the author already said, we don't know what Jesus said. So, but now you're going to nitpick and say, what is the meaning of this miracle? And why does Jesus say, I am to the disciples? We don't know if he said that. We know he didn't because they didn't speak English, so they said something else. At first glance, you could argue that Jesus' words, I am, Greek, ego, iemi, simply means it's me. And again, he didn't speak Greek, so that's already translated. Indeed, that's exactly how the expression is translated in various English versions of the Bible. Take heart, it is I. And to be sure, the Greek expression I am can be used simply as a way to identify oneself. For example, elsewhere in the Gospels, Jesus speaks about false messiahs who will come and say I am, meaning by implication, I am the Messiah. According to this interpretation, Jesus would simply be identifying himself to the disciples. On the other hand, while it's certainly true that Jesus is identifying himself, there are several problems with the idea that he's only identifying himself. Yeah, because it doesn't fit the narrative you're trying to shove down our throat. For one thing, in the original Greek, Jesus, it's not original Greek. He spoke Aramaic, probably, if he's even a real person. Um, Jesus does not say, it is I, as some English translations suggest. He literally says, I am. Oh my God, we're nitpicking over, it is I versus I am. Translated at least three times, handed down over 30 years before it was written. God, grasping at straws is what this guy's doing. This is different from other occasions when Jesus simply wants to identify himself. For example, after the resurrection, when the disciples don't recognize him, oh, <laughs> he don't say, maybe it was somebody else. Um, Jesus says, it is I myself, meaning it is really me. In other words, whenever the expression I am occurs by itself, then its meaning must be determined by the context. In certain contexts, the expression I am by itself means much more than just it's me. In the Old Testament, I am is often used for the divine name of God. For our purposes, by far the most important of these passages is the famous account of the appearance of God to Moses in the burning bush on Mount Sinai. Is there any evidence that happened? Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God says to Moses, I am who I am. <laughs> oh man, there's a good joke about that. It's a zebra who goes to heaven, and his whole life he was wondering if he's a white horse with black stripes or a black horse with white stripes. And uh, he gets to the pearly gates and uh, asks God, 
and God says, you are what you are. And he goes back to St. Peter and says, well, I don't get it. Does that mean I'm a white horse or a black horse? He's like, oh, well, if he said you are what you are, you're a white horse. If, you, <laughs> if he said you is what you is, you'd be a black horse. <laughs> All right, sorry, racist joke. Not even funny because I didn't present it right, but whatever. I heard that one in church, so must be okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna recreate the walking on the water, actually, because there's some really cool sandbars around here in Marco Island where you could be way out at sea, and at low tide, these sandbars will barely be visible, but at mid tide or a little low, low to mid, um, it's totally covered up, and from the right angle, I could look like I was a mile out at sea just walking, and pretty far too, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how easy it is. Check it out, I'm walking on water. It is I, myself, your Lord. <laughs> I'm God and so are you.